and welcome to the par three here on the lines brought to you by the lines.com matt brown steven anders this is the rbc heritage edition heading just right down the road from augusta an elevated event with a limited field no cut if you were not paying attention to how this one is going to play out so a little bit different of a strategy in all of this, Stephen, we're coming off of yet another win by Scotty Scheffler, yet another dominating performance by Scotty Scheffler. And what it's done is for me, at least in the interim, I'm kind of changing my betting strategy a little bit here. While I'm not pulling out of betting outrights, I'm pulling back on the amount of monetary outlay I have in the outrights because I think there might be more EV and betting top fives and top tens and top twenties on some of these guys than it is betting outrights right now with the way that Scotty Scheffler's playing. Unless he withdraws from this event, and I guess we should say this if you weren't paying attention to the Masters, him and Sam Burns' wife are both due, apparently at any point. And so they might withdraw should either one of their uh, significant others go into labor. And so that might be the only thing that keeps him out of uh, hoisting a trophy over his head yet again. Well, the thing is, Burns' wife apparently is due this week. So he's more likely to WD than Scheffler. Scheffler's wife is apparently a couple of weeks away. So, like, that storyline last week was pretty low probability. But, you know, I'm, I'm curious, is, is your strategy around some of the placement markets here with Scheffler being such a heavy favorite in the outright market really that the fact that he's such a big favorite and creating longer odds in the outright market is a trickle-down effect trickle down effect to the placement market of these other guys too and you're getting some better numbers yeah I mean I think we're getting better numbers for sure on some of these dudes and some of these numbers were just really attractive to me of guys that were high in the model for me but again what is the win equity with Scotty Scheffler in the field like I don't know what the win equity is really at any point I I mean Stephen not to get off on an incredible tangent here in all of this but you know I, I think we really need to put what Scotty's doing in historical context. Like I made the comment on Twitter about the fact that he might already be the most skilled golfer top to bottom that we've ever seen. And then as far as like goat status goes, if he continues on this trajectory, he's at least going to be in the conversation. And I got an incredible amount of, of, of flack for that. And I got a ton of people, you know, tiger, this tiger, that whatever. Look, I have been a golf fan. Like this is, I'm not, I'm not parachuting in whatever. My dad was the biggest golf fan on the face of my, I've been watching golf since I was a, a child, whether I wanted to or not, right? Like since I was a very small child, whether I wanted to or not, I have been through all of the eras. I'm taking nothing away from tiger, but at the same time, Steven, we, I think we do have to put into perspective that this is, this is a far deeper player field that Scotty's going up against than what Tiger ever went through over the course of his career. And and honestly, we have Tiger to thank for that because these guys learned how to train and how to be pros and how to take golf seriously and all that. And Tiger was the one who molded all of this generation of golfers. But the fact of the matter is, is all of these dudes are long now. All of these dudes work out. All these dudes stay in shape. All of these guys are doing everything better and working harder because of what, because of what Tiger did for the game of golf. And so I'm not taking anything away from Tiger. All I'm saying is, is Scotty is putting up better numbers just strictly from a number standpoint. I know not from raw wins, but from a, if we're talking driving distance, ball striking around the green stuff. The only thing that would be different was putting because we know Scotty's struggled with the putter for a while. But, you know, I don't think it's crazy for us to just, okay, understand that sports evolve and golf is just like any other thing like it's going to evolve and this is just a gener- different generation of athlete that we're seeing play the game right now this take is not you know you and me have been talking about this for more than a year now with scotty yeah. it, and at least in terms of his t to green numbers they were so damn good that we haven't seen it since tiger woods in 2005 2006 when tiger won four majors and one had had 14 wins over that span had a stretch where, like, this shocked me. I, I almost forgot it. He, had, he won six straight events in 2006. So, like, this isn't just he's coming off the Masters win and we're being, um, you know, we're exaggerating a point here and, and being mm-hmm. too much recency bias. Like, you and I have been talking about this since last year when his tee degree yeah. numbers were historic. And now it's just he's found a putter he's comfortable with and is back to putting near tour average. And when you combine that with the historic tee to green stuff, yeah, I mean, he's, he's just yeah. 
otherworldly at this point. He is and we find him at four to one this week, and I'm hard pressed in a field of only sixty nine players to say that that's not justified. Right, but I will say this, Matt. And this week in the RBC Heritage, the context is it's a shorter course where driving distance and your prowess off the tee and power off the tee is mitigated a little bit. So it takes a weapon out of the quiver of Scotty Scheffler that in major championships or longer courses is a very big deal for him. So that, at least for me this week with the RBC Heritage, makes me more inclined to try and beat him. Yeah, so Stephen, I mean, I like I said, I, I changed my betting strategy a little bit this week. Did you change yours at all, or are you just going to keep going? I mean, I understand the deal about the course and all that, but like, it's still advantage longer guys because if you're longer with the driver, you're still going to be longer with a three wood or longer with a five wood or longer with a three iron than, you know, these other guys are as well. Scotty hits a ton of fairways, so he's already accurate. And the thing about these tiny greens is if it's any, if anyone is not going to be affected by the tiny green stuff, it's going to be him because he's the one who puts it eight feet from the cup every friggin' time that he hits an approach. And so, you know, I, I I do understand that the driver is at least taken out of his hand a little bit, but I don't know if it really affects how much of an advantage he has on the field. Yeah. So I didn't change my strategy mm-hmm. for this week. And I guess call me crazy for, for trying to bet against Scheffler, who's won three times in the past four weeks. Um, and the other time he was right there at the end. Yeah. So um, I haven't yet. I am certainly pondering it. Uh, last mm-hmm. week at the Masters, I will tell you that if you watch this video last week, I did suggest parlaying Scotty with the Denver Nuggets. I am now one of the biggest Denver Nuggets fans on the planet <laughs> for the playoffs this year because I I did do that. So yeah. if you want to bet Scotty, I don't like it's it's the odds are so low that it's even less than a single bullet at this point. You're not getting the yeah. normal payout even if you just play Scotty when you do your typical. Uh, for for me and John Hasselbauer, it's around three, 3.25 units to win 24, 25 units, something like that. So his odds make that restrictive. So um, I'm going to still try and beat him, but we should maybe have this conversation again when we're back to another long, difficult course. Yeah. And, and listen, the way that I bet golf is different than other people that bet golf. I've been fortunate enough to have a decent amount of success over the last few years. So I have a decent bankroll. And so... Right. You know, I don't have one unit in play per golfer or whatever. Like, you know, I will have multiple units in play per guy, right? So, I mean, it's just, it's, so for me, basically what I've done is allocated less money towards the actual outright and more money towards the top five, top 10, or top 20, if it's if it's a, one of the longer shot guys or something like that, to maybe try to maximize a 95th per- percentile outcome that just, isn't good enough to beat the best player in the world and maybe ends up being the best player that, you know, that we've ever seen. And so I'm going to, that's kind of, I'm going to try it at least here for a little bit and see what happens. I'm not saying it's the right way. I was just wanted to at least talk it through, you know, with, with the audience out there and all that. Cause to me, I, I, I look, there's just no weakness in this guy. You know, there's just, there's just no weakness in this dude. And, and unless he has just a mental letdown, which, hey, you know, maybe he will, maybe it's like, okay, I won the masters again. I'll just, you know, I'll I'll take it easy this week, but I can't imagine an elevated event with a short field. This Scotty's at least not going to be in the mix yet again. So as we go, as as always, guys, if you uh, want the full breakdown of the course and all of that, head over to lines.com. John's article is up over there. It's one of the best in the industry, so be sure and take advantage of that. But Stephen, as we do each and every week, you're going to give three plays. I'm going to give three plays. If you want our full card, you go to lines.com. Upper right-hand corner is the Discord channel, and that is absolutely free. You can get our full card over there but uh you're on the box my friend all right so you're gonna get a theme from me this week for the rbc heritage with the outrights i share in this video and they're typically short course specialists guys that are very good with their irons might even mix in a little bit of decent putting Mm -hmm. uh but driving distance is not important to me this week wasn't even in the modeling services that i ran so first guy i want to mention is colin morikawa because I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for him to at least show some signs of improvement. He Mm -hmm. had a new coach this year he hired for a lot of the year. News comes out last week at the Masters that he's no longer working with him. He says that he found something on the range with his irons finally at Augusta before the tournament started. And at a course where he really, in my mind, has such little chance of winning because he's not long off the tee, has another solid finish at the Masters 
with a top three. That was clearly because his irons were back to being some of the best in the world. And if we go look big picture now at a couple of things, courses that are less than 7,200 yards and also Pete Dye courses, these are among the types of splits where Colin Morikawa rates out really well. Top five and also uh, I think top five as well in the in the short courses. So that's over the last 50 rounds. So I just think with his price, it still hasn't quite recovered from his disappointing start to the season. There's a 20 to one out there at BetMGM. I can tell you there was a 30% odds boost at Bet365 that allowed me to get him up to mm-hmm. 26 to one. I don't need much to hop back on the Colin Morikawa bandwagon. This is a, a winner on the tour, multiple major championships. I just need to see that the irons are working. I saw that last week. I hop back on Matt. Yeah, it's so it's kind of a good news, bad news situation with the Scotty thing. So it's bad news because Scotty's in the field, and obviously he is the best golfer in the world by a long shot. It's good news that we have gotten drift, though, on some of these other guys because Scotty has been so dominant. So if we look at the odds board top to bottom, as I mean, Scotty's your favorite four to one. We now have it to where Rory is no longer second shot. It is Xander who is second shot now at 11 12. And Ludwig is actually right there with Rory from an odd standpoint as well. And, you know, it's wild. The Ludwig stuff is wild, man. Lud- Ludwig is going to win. And Ludwig's going to win a lot. Um, it's but just, I'm, if I'll, I miss I'll out, cap. I can't pay this price. That, that's it. what I said. Like, I- I'll miss out on the 14 to 1 on it, you know. But the problem is, is he has just gone out there and performed. Like, he's, he's met the hype, is the problem. And so we're not going to get any odds drift. Yeah. On him, right? Like, that's the problem, right? We're just not going to get any odds drift on him because he's met the hype. He's done everything that we've asked. If you go look at historic stuff from guys that have made their first handful of starts on tour, Ludwig is number one by a bullet across the board. He's number one in driving, number one in ball striking, number one around the green, number one in putting. And this is like historic stuff. Better than Louis Oosthuizen in putting, better than Tiger and all these other guys driving. Better where I mean, he's he just he just met the hype. Like I'd almost right? rather pay like an eight to one if he shows up at like the Rocket Mortgage than yeah. pay a fourteen to one in a signature. Agreed. Final. Agreed. Agreed. Um, and so, like we said, we've seen some odds drift. So now you're getting a guy like you mentioned, Morikawa out to twenty. You're getting a guy like Fitzpatrick out to twenty five. Homa out to twenty eight at some places. You know, Zalatoris out to 30. And so we're, we're getting some better odds. Like I said, good news, bad news, because Scotty could just go out and win. But the uh, the good news is that we're getting at least a little bit uh, longer odds on guys that in a 69-player field and no-cut event, we probably should, be, should not be getting the uh, type of odds that we're getting on them. First play for me, and this is, th- this I know, Captain Obvious and all of that, but l- look, I ran a bunch of different types of models. I... What I did was is I valued the shorter term models more than the longer term models because I want to see who's coming in with good iron play. I want to see who's striking it well right now for all the stuff that you mentioned above, which is since it does at least take a little bit of the of the driver and driving distance stuff out of play this week and Siwoo still popped up like, you know, and I know it's this whole deal about Siwoo Kim and Pete Dye course, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Although he hadn't had all that great success here specifically, but Siwoo was inside the top five in every version of every model. And I'm talking as high as top as, as high as second behind only Scotty Scheffler in some of these models that I ran. You can find him as high as like 33 to one out there. I think currently, if you're looking around the industry, there's a 35 actually out there. Right now, if you're if you're looking to play him, like I said, I invested more in a top five. I invested more in a top ten. There's kind of like five and a half to one out there on a top five. There's a two and a half to one on a top ten. These are at ties pay in full places. You can get you'll see better numbers, but I always play at the ties pay in full places, specifically in a short field, no cut, you know, event like this. I'm gonna always play the ties play in full um, stuff like that. So. Uh, Siwoo Kim for me, you know, if you look at this, I I, I mean, he's fourth in this field in, in, in driving proximity from the edge of the fairway. He's eighth in this tee to green over the last 20 rounds. If you go into some of these other numbers and try to figure out why is some, why is Siwoo Kim showing up so high in all these? And you say like, oh, okay, well it's because he's been really good. He's actually been really good around the green over the last 20 rounds, 13th in this field around the green. He's 12th in ball striking. He's 13th in good drive percentage. So just a ton of stuff. I think that fits this course for Siwoo Kim and 
again, is this win equity worth it? I don't know, but I think a top five, top 10 is, is really good as well. Siwoo was actually on my card. And then I cashed it out at full stake and, and took him off. So he is now the first guy off of my card. And really, it was a tough decision, but it came down to the fact that Morikawa's odds slipped to the point where I could get him at a really good number with an odds mm -hmm. boost. And also, Wyndham Clark, which you can hear the explanation of that more on the Discord. I'm not going to talk about it here. I've talked about Wyndham Clark every week on this show. But uh, Wyndham Clark getting down to a point where you could use an odds boost at Caesars to get him at more than 50 to 1 which I didn't really have a choice at that point, but to take mm -hmm. Siwoo off the card. But I saw everything you did in the modeling with, with Siwoo Kim. I don't blame you one bit for it. Uh, so hat tip to you there. Second guy for me is a guy who has broken hearts all over the golf betting landscape. It is Russell Henley. And if yes. I just look at I call you, it the Russell Henley experience, uh, <laughs> yeah. Stephen. Like, it is the Russell Henley experience. More like the Russell Henley nightmare, <laughs> honestly. But uh, last 24 rounds overall, he was top five for me in this field. Um, just right there with Siwoo. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of good things here overall. I mean, he finds fairways off the tee. He is among the best at the certain splits for irons that we're looking at here from 125 to 150, 150 to 175. But also just with scrambling, if we get a little bit of wind uh, at this coastal course, uh, just just really green across the board uh, other than some longer iron play, which hopefully won't come into effect as much this week at the RBC Heritage. Mm -hmm. And if we go more into splits here, if we look at last 50 rounds on Pete Dye courses, he ranks in the top six. If we look at last 50 rounds on courses that are less than 7,200 yards, he's actually number one for me. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a strong look here at 40 to one. And uh, if he's in contention on Sunday, I just won't watch for my emotional <laughs> uh, support emotional strategy and just hope that he uh, can hold on if he's in contention. Yeah, well, I'm with you on another guy that's an experience and another guy that made the card for me is a guy that's likely to break my heart and it's going to be Shane Lowry, uh, a guy that, man, you, you you will have him in the top five after a Saturday heading into Sunday and you're like, damn, I might get home. And then you look down and he's like T19 and you're like, what the hell happened? And it's just the Shane Lowry <laughs> experience as well. But you know, same deal, man. You look over the last 20 rounds, right, which for most guys is five or six tournaments. If they made the cut every time, obviously, we're looking at, at five tournaments. He's heading into this, Stephen, first in this field, even ahead of Scotty in, in weighted strokes gain approach. He's number one in T to green. He's tied, uh, you know, I mean, he's second in T to green, only behind Scotty in T to green. He's third in good drive percentage. He's got all of these things we're looking for, right? Opportunities gained. He's second in this field, like looks inside of 15 feet. All these different things. I know it's tough with, with Shane Lowry. It is the guy looks like he's going to go win tournaments all the time, only to, to, to blow up in one of the four rounds. And, and that the consistency, certainly from a win equity standpoint, sucks. But I also played him top five, top ten. Like I said, it is a different betting strategy for me this week where I chopped it up, kind of like outright got a little bit, then top five, top ten, got a nice little majority of the money. Um, but it, again, a guy that just a model darling for me in the short-term stuff of we're looking who's coming in hot, he's hitting the damn irons as good as anybody out there. And of course, it's going to be demanding for those. And so I will take a ride with you as well. You're going the Henley experience. I'll take the Lowry experience, and we can both curse with each other on Sunday whenever both the guys are like in the top five heading into the final round and, and end up like T15. Yeah, I, Lowry's on my card too, uh, mm -hmm. so we're going to ride him together. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the, the approach game has been phenomenal from him for like yeah. more than a month now. If he could just find a way to putt decent on a Sunday, he might actually win one of these things, so... Um, here we go again with here Shane Lowry. Again. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you, man. <laughs> uh, there, I've found a lot of similarities to my handicapping this week to the Players' Championship from a couple of weeks ago. And the, the third guy I'm going to mention is a guy I also bet at the Players' Championship. And it's Brian Harmon. Now, Harmon didn't play well at the Masters. Like Morikawa, he's, he just doesn't hit it far off the tee. He's, I'd be shocked if Brian Harmon is ever in contention at Augusta National. It's just, it just doesn't suit his game. And in those conditions, he had no shot. Like, like, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, in, in those conditions, he had, he had no shot. Yeah. So 
What's interesting here is that Brian Harmon, if you look at short courses over the last 50 rounds, ranks out number two for me this week when I'm when you're weighing the stats that I'm using. If you look at Pete Dye courses, he's also top two in those areas over the last 50 rounds. So uh, again, Players Championship, Stadium Course, Pete Dye, pretty solid there. So one putt away from being in a playoff, actually, against Scotty Scheffler. So I'm looking more at splits with Brian Harmon. The overall numbers aren't as kind. Uh, he's, he's more like top 15. But we also got some drift this week. He was 45 to one. He's, he's dropped down to more like 60 to one now for Brian Harmon. Um, with so much iron play here and being able to convert for birdies, having Harmon on my card, who's such an excellent putter, just felt really good to me. And he's got some pretty decent course history here too, Matt. So I can always lean back on that. He's got a seventh last year at this event. So he just fit for me. Short course mm-hmm. specialist. Can't really bet him in a lot of other courses throughout yep. the year. And I like it. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely get it. And, you know, listen, the the performance at the Masters shouldn't really shouldn't really deter anybody. These are two completely different types of courses and two, yeah. like we said. And Matt, this is kind of like narrative street here. But, like, right. after all these guys grinded for four days at the Masters, I almost don't mind a guy who missed the cut. Mm-hmm. Get a few extra days off and then go to the RBC with $4 million on the line. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it just, like I said, those, those conditions were just a guy like Harmon is just never going to happen, right? I mean, like, if the wind is just playing so against you, there's just no no chance on a long course like that for, for him to get it done. So I don't mind that play at all with Harmon. These types of courses certainly are going to suit him well. The other guy, if we're talking about positional courses that I have to mention here, guy popped in the model all over the place. Is there enough win equity? Maybe it's more, again, placement market type stuff, like I said, where I've invested. But Corey Connors... Another guy here, if you look, I mean, Stephen, we're entering this deal with Corey Connors coming in. And if you look at all of your modeling stuff out there, guys, like Corey Connors is a guy. If we talk about last 20 rounds, strokes gain approach, second in this field. If you go to ball striking, fourth in the field. If we're talking about these approach buckets that we like, where this like 150 to 175, where we're going to see a ton of these approach comes from. He's second in this field and that he's in the top 20 in good drive percentage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So all of the stuff that kind of fits these little, these type of course narratives are stuff that Corey Connors does. Well, you're going to find him at long odds. It's like 59, 60, 55, 59, something like that to one sprinkle. There's fine, but listen, be okay with a, with a, with a top 10 at over three to one, be okay at a top 20. It's still plus money, stuff like that on a Corey Connors that, you know, the other thing about him, Stephen, that I, I have come to respect about Connor's game over the last couple of years, where I used to avoid betting Corey Connors like the plague, but the guy's a grinder. Right? He's a battler. So, like, he's the dude that if he's in 30th on a Sunday, he will grind to get in that top 20. Like, like he, he grinds. He will go out, and even though he knows his win equity is zero, He'll shoot you that three under on a Sunday and get you inside that top 20, get you inside and maybe sneak into a top 10 or something like that as well. And so uh, Corey Connors for all the course fit type of stuff and also just from a subjective thing here um, for me, I, I like the fight in Corey Connors. I like the fact that he'll go out and and even when the when he knows he ain't going to win, he will still go out and, and give you a round that can do something good for you. So Corey Connors, my final play here on the par three. And if there's ever a course that he's going to finally putt decent at, it's a course with some of the smallest screens on the PGA yeah. Tour, right? Like, that would make sense. So, and that's what we have here uh, at Harbortown. So, I, I like it there. I like the fact that he does have a top 10 in his history at this course mm-hmm. already. I think it was actually even a top five. It was in 2021. So, and he actually gained strokes putting in that, in that mm-hmm. year. So, very rare for Corey Connor. So, I like the look from you there. Um, yeah, this is, this is typically a spot where I would be more inclined to bet Corey Cotters because otherwise his putting is just absolutely terrible, but maybe he gets away with it on these greens guys. Again, our full card, you can find over in the free lines, discord lines.com and Corrales Punta Cana, Matt from John Hasselbauer in the discord double week alt event guys, alternate event time, go in there. You can get some thoughts 
over there as well. There are actually some some decent golfers playing that uh playing that tournament. So yeah, I'm I'm can, just saying, look out for the Danish prince this week. That's that's all I'll say. <laughs> That's all. That's all. His, that's the tease. If you want to go over there and, uh, and and read that article, but yes, go in, take a look at uh, everything we have on a card over at the free, absolutely free, lines Discord channel, upper right hand corner of the site. By the way, if you have not already subscribed to this channel, everything's free too. So we're not only talking golf here, but we're talking every single sport, every single thing that we do on this channel. So be sure take advantage of that. Hit the bell. Make sure you get notified every single time that we post anything here for Steven. I'm Matt. Good luck on all your RBC bets.